We're going to turn now to an important issue as we emerge from this pandemic. And yes, we begin to ease off mask mandates. Air ventilation quality has been a growing conversation among health officials, especially when it comes to our school systems. So today we are diving deeper into this topic with Dr. Ashton here. What do you got yeah, for us? Yeah, we're going to geek out on this aerosol right. science. Uh, we're taking a look at a school in North Carolina that recently upgraded their ventilation system, as many places are doing. They did this in the hopes of keeping their students outside the doctor's office and inside the classroom. Take a look. Marlo Wilson Alston was a new mom when tragedy struck at the end of 2019. Three days before her wedding anniversary, traveling home to visit family for the holidays, her husband passed away. Three months later, COVID hit, leaving Marlo worried about the safety of her young baby. I had so many fears about my son going to daycare. We were in a very precarious situation. My husband had died unexpectedly. It threw me into the guts of single motherhood. The pandemic came. I didn't have a whole lot of family around. I didn't have a lot of friends who can help watch my little boy. So Marlo called husband and wife Bill and Yah McConnell, the owners of the Primrose School of South Charlotte, where Marlo's son attends preschool. Our first and foremost priority was making sure that the children and staff at our school, we were taking their health and healthcare needs most seriously, making sure that we were keeping them safe whilst we cared for them. When COVID happened, I had a conversation with my father who brought up the fact that he was looking into a UVC system for his house. And I wondered if it would be something that we could utilize at our preschool. Bill went online and discovered these ultraviolet filtration systems, the same kind commonly used in airplanes, could also be used in their school. Ultraviolet has been proven to be exceptionally effective at complementing filtration, designed to disinfect and treat the air, as well as even maybe more importantly, the HVAC equipment itself. So filters are obviously designed to address particulates, but the UV disinfection technology is able to address those biologicals, those odors, those VOCs that pass through a filter like sand through a tennis racket. It's designed to complement filtration. And better air filtration was an easy way to improve the health and safety of preschoolers, still too young to understand rules. The first and foremost concern was we have young children who cannot necessarily social distance, cannot necessarily wear masks, but we knew that we had to step up the health and safety protocols that we already had in place so that our focus would be on providing care and education. What COVID-19 has done is really opened our eyes. It really brought awareness to indoor air quality. If there is such thing as a silver lining is that it made us more aware that we should be more proactive. We should be doing more to improve the air that we breathe. This system felt like an opportunity to help our families that need our care and provide them a place to bring their children and be able to depend on us. For Marlo, that truly is a breath of fresh air. Knowing that my little boy is in an environment where he is safe, he's healthy, where he doesn't have to worry about what's happening around him, it makes me incredibly comfortable. I don't know that he actually understands what's happening, but guess what? The little guy is happy. He loves the environment that he's in, and he has no clue the enhancements that were put in place just to protect him and all his little friends. You guys, I really feel like these kind of advances may be one of the silver linings of this pandemic. You know, the research and development and things, this, this sounds like a good idea, even regardless of COVID, right? Yeah, no, it makes sense just to prevent all sorts of potential illnesses. Yep. Now, in terms of COVID-19, we know that it's transmitted by inhaling it, inhalation, right. but it's been controversial yeah. as to whether or not COVID-19 is technically airborne. Right. Where From does it the beginning, there was a lot of fixation on the terminology. Is it by droplets or is it airborne? And by the way, airborne sounds really scary. Tuberculosis, measles, there are plenty of infectious diseases that are airborne. What it comes down to is the size of the particle, how far it travels, the distance, and how the hang time, to use a, a football <laughs> term that I know you're both familiar with, how long <laughs> those particles linger in the air. Smaller particles, those fine particles, that's when people say, oh, this is airborne, and they can travel farther, they can linger longer, and potentially they can really lodge in our passageways and make us sicker. So 
let's not focus so much on the terminology, but most there's general consensus now that yes, it's both droplet and airborne. So how important can these things be, these ventilation systems? We're going to be spending more time indoors, That's right? right. So remember, the weather in this country and other parts of the world is not always suitable just to do everything outdoors. So there is intense research and development, a lot of it going on behind the scenes, you know, at schools, at workplaces, for travel, in doing better upgrading their filtration systems and killing as many microbes or organisms that can be traveled in the air as possible. And this is a perfect example of that. All right. And we were just saying, as I was watching your piece, I have seen some of those UV systems right. being put in place. How much more effective are they at filtering the air? It's a great question. And we don't know in a laboratory setting or in a real life setting how this works. But remember, again, you think of it like a one-two punch. You have a mechanical filtration with a regular HEPA filter that is going on. And then you zap these parts particles with UV light. We've been using UV light in operating rooms. People use them in restaurants. Usually at night when there are not, no people around, you can you know, see that in use. This is interesting because it's using it kind of in the duct work. So mm. I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of this. How actually effective it remains to be seen. Okay. Can you afford it though? I mean, can, <laughs> can school? <laughs> I can't. It, but is right. it feasible it, for a school well, to do all these the upgrades? Thing. Huge price tag. But right now, people listening, what you can do at home, number one, we've heard this before. For. Ventilation is so important. So open the windows and doors as much as possible, weather permitting, of course. The other thing is use what you have. Everyone has, or a lot of people have, exhaust fans over their stove. Mine actually doesn't work right now, but I'm going to get it fixed. Um, <laughs> those, those fans in the bathroom that suck out steam, that can help. And then if you have an HVAC unit, air conditioning, heat, put that fan onto the on position instead of auto so that it's really running all the time and not letting those particles kind of linger there. Oh. All of this can help. We can't open our doors and windows just yet. When allergy That's season right. is over, That's I will be right. the first to do it. But, wow, it's not easy right about now. Nope. 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 I'm fine. I do what y'all told me to do. I'm House call. <laughs> you need you need doctor's uh, supervision. <laughs> Dr. Jen, thank you. As always, we appreciate you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.